G'day, bloody dickheads, vaping fucking bogan. Back once again for another Ridgy Didge review. How the fuck are you lot? Hope you're all doing good as gold. Got something new here from Half Moon Mods. The RKT, or Rocket, you might say. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's definitely got a bit of a, a rocket kind of uh, profile to it. It's a single battery, fully mechanical mod. You could say it's a tube mod, but it's not your standard fucking shape. <laughs> Takes a single 21700, 2700, 18650, and also the two 0650s, which is pretty fucking awesome if you ask me. You got a whole bunch of different battery options there. And uh, yeah, quite a unique little fucking magnetic switch. We'll have a look at more closely in the up and bloody close. But let's uh, take it for a rip. I've got some uh, usual point one aliens in the Bonza, if you were wondering what RDA I'm fucking using there, and a nice little matching drip tip from Half Moon. Anyway, let's take it for a two. Hitting like the back of dad's hand. Very, very nicely uh, performing this one. But we'll talk all the ins and outs in a fucking moment. Let's quickly talk a little vape advocacy as fucking per usual. At the moment, I really want to sort of push a bit of Aussie vape advocacy. We've got our election, our federal election happening this weekend. It's a chance for us to make sure that we get the right politicians in to, uh, to, to the positions. And uh, we have the Aussie Vape Day happening on the 29th of May, which is basically a bit of a fundraiser to try and get uh, Athra, the, uh, the sort of Australian version of Kassar, a bit of support. They are a board of doctors that are lobbying and pressuring the government to put in uh, you know, sensible regulations and legalise nicotine in e-juice. And their, uh, their organisation is completely free of funding from the vape industry. They want to make sure that they are an independent body putting pressure on the government. But to keep them doing their fucking thing, we obviously need a bit of support. So there's a GoFundMe. I'll put a link down below if you can chuck in a few bob and help this organisation fight for your right as an Australian to not die from fucking cigarette smoking. All right, so uh, go and hit that up. I think uh, anybody can donate and Aussies will be able to uh, tax deduct it um, from their returns. Anyway, let's have a fucking uh, beer, eh, dickheads? Today's beer comes to me courtesy of one of my Patreons, Mr. Brandon. Fucking shout out to you, bro. Thank you very much. Uh, this one here is from Odd13 Brewing and it's called IP Alien. <laughs> As you'd guess, it is an India Pale Ale. Uh, I believe it's brewed up in Lafayette, Colorado. It's fucking seven bloody percent. IP Alien is an, I, an India Pale Ale featuring a variety of space-themed hops. Apollo, Comet, and Galaxy all play a role. Very low bitterness and massive dry hopping combined to create an incredibly juicy IPA. Sounds right up me bloody alley. Let's, uh, let's see how she fucking tastes. Well, there you go, dickheads. Looks pretty thick and juicy to me. Looks like fucking mango juice. Very fucking nice and yellow and uh, thick. There's some sediment floating around there, which means some fucking flavor. On the nose, yeah, fruity. Sort of that New England Nipah sort of, uh, sort of smell. Anyway, bottoms up, cheers. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that is nice. Pretty low on the bitterness, as the label suggests quite a smooth, almost slightly fucking um, creamy at the end there. Got a really, really nice fucking uh, fruitiness there, a thick fucking mouthfeel like you're drinking juice. I mean, you're getting sort of like mango, pineapple, that kind of tropical vibe. Yeah, maybe a little bit of passion fruit. Just a hint of bitterness, and then that kind of chills out to almost a, a, a creamy fruit flavour. That, uh, that is pretty fucking good. We'll pair it up with a juice, as always. Got a new one here from the London Gin Parlour. I've been a big fan of their line for a little while now. Um, Gin-infused or gin-themed juices. This is a new one called Parma Violet. Now, Parma Violet is like a UK sweet, like a candy, sort of like a chalky, hard, kind of uh, pill-shaped candy. Uh, I don't think we get them down here in uh, Australia, but this juice is fucking delicious. It's like kind of a, a musky, um, you know, chalky kind of candy feel. It's a little bit, um, oh, it says like violet flavor. I don't know what fucking violet tastes like, but it tastes kind of berry-ish to me. It's, uh, it's real bloody nice. We'll pair it up with this fucking beer and see how she goes, hey? 
Oh, that, that is really mixing interestingly with the fucking beer. Very fruity, changing the flavor quite a lot. Yeah, that is nice. Don't know how to fucking describe it, but it's like a fucking cocktail of different sort of fruits and candy feels. The chalky kind of feel of the, the juice is really nice with the fucking uh, beer. Yeah, I'm liking that. I'm liking that. Anyway, dickheads, what we're going to do, get down the oven bloody close. We're going to uh, break this thing down. I'll show you how you interchange the parts so that you can use uh, 21 700s or 18 650s. There's, uh, it comes with two little acrylic. Anyway, we'll fucking see when you get in there and we'll talk some pros, cons, prices at the end. Okie fucking dokie, dickheads. I'm not sure whether the packaging I received was retail packaging. I received, uh, you know, one of these for beta testing uh, some time ago, but I think this is what you should get roughly um, with your packages. So you obviously get the Rocket Mod. You get a second acrylic middle section. This is for your 18650s or your 20650 uh, batteries. It's a slightly shorter piece of acrylic to accommodate the different battery lengths. You'll also get uh, a couple of adapters for the width of your battery. Um, remembering obviously your 2700s, your 21s and your 18s all slightly different. So this uh, very, very sort of narrow middle, this is for your 18 650s. Uh, it's got a nice little O-ring on the side there to keep it all nice and snug. If you're using 20 uh, 650s or 2700s, you're going to use this little sleeve here, just a very thin, narrow sleeve to take up any sort of battery wobble from side to side, so that's great to fucking see. Uh, you get a little Allen key for installing that acrylic section or removing the acrylic section, and I believe you will get one of these sort of cone-shaped drip tips that go well with the whole rocket kind of shape, you know, bit of a tip for your fucking rocket, all obviously matching the same acrylic. But let's just fucking get into it, hey dickheads. So it's a fully aluminium, and I've got some fucking juice on my fingers apparently. Um, fully aluminium uh, body, top and bottom there. Uh, I really like up the top here, they've got uh, a little insert or a, a copper threading for your uh, atomizer, hopefully increase sort of voltage transfer, a little bit of uh, engraving there. Now in terms of what atomizer widths you can put on here, uh, you can go up to about a 25 millimeter and you won't get any overhang. It's got a little bit of a beveling on the edge, so 24s will look really nice and 25s, which I've got here, this is a Bonza 1.5 RDA with a 25 millimeter top cap on there, and as you can see, really nice flush sort of fit there, but 24s and 25s look good. Anything bigger is going to have some overhang, so just be aware of that. Remember, dickheads, with any hybrid mechanical mod, this is a hybrid connection, so the atomizer is making direct contact with your battery. Make sure that the threading, okay, or the, uh, should I say, the pin, that little gold pin there, needs to be sticking out further than the threads. This one, as you can see, is very safe with that uh, peak insulator sticking out there as well. But make sure your atomizers look like that, or else you can run into fucking a big trouble. So it's a very interesting shape. It's not something that I've really seen, you know, in uh, in a mod before. You could call it a tube mod, I suppose. But um, yeah, very fucking uh, interesting. Very ergonomic, quite comfortable in the hand. It reminds me of, uh, you know, those little pencil inserts or you'd put around the outside of your pencil or your pen when you're at school. Um, the little triangle shaped thing to help you hold your pen better as you were fucking learning. Um, it kind of reminds me of that. It's got, um, it's got that same kind of feel to it, the way it sort of nestles into your, into your grip there. You know, something new and different and also quite comfortable in the fucking hand. Now there's also something quite uh, nice and unique with the uh, the switch and the button mechanism. So as you can see there, we've got some half moon um, engraving on the bottom. Again, you've got the RKT around there. You've got these nice cutouts here, which make it really, really comfortable to get your finger around the side of it. However, you want to hold it, pointer finger, side of your you know index finger. Um, these little cutouts here certainly, particularly with a very thick. It's got quite a thick body to it. Um, you know, having these divots here make it very, very comfortable. Now getting the switch apart. Uh, this this tricked me a little bit. I was sitting here and I was twisting this, I was spinning, I was spinning this, um, I was trying to rotate this, you know, I was like trying to pull it apart here, twist it here. I was like, what the fuck? How do I get this thing to bloody open up the switch? It's actually really simple and uh, probably why I didn't figure it out straight away. You just pull. You just pull away there and it's got some really, really nice strong magnets basically in these three here prongs. So you've got a magnet and that's just lining up with these uh, little holes in uh, the bottom of the mod. Really, really strong. It's got a really nice, satisfying fucking snap. 
just sort of clicks back in there. Haven't had it pop out on me or, or come out and do anything funky like that. You've got the uh, the inside there of your battery tube. Very nicely machined, all super smooth, super nicely done. Now the switch, it's got uh, some more cleverness here, which I think is uh, is very neat. Uh, I like how they've used the acrylic, the same acrylic that you have in the body as the insulator around the contact here. So you've got a nice solid copper contact that's going to basically make uh, contact with the battery as you push up. So you push and that's how you are going to fire it. Now to adjust for battery rattle, um, up and down battery rattle that is, you can uh, you can basically twist the, the threaded section here. As you can see there's some threads in here. And basically you wind it out and that lengthens you know, the total height of the insulator as you can see here. Now this is obviously wound out too far but um, you know just to give you an idea of, of how it works, um, you know that is your, uh, that's your fucking insulator there and that's your battery adjustment and uh, you know you wind it in to to you know compensate for a longer battery um, depending you know every battery is slightly different in the way that it uh, is manufactured the battery wraps and all the rest of it so the easiest way to adjust for your battery rattle is to say wind this out fairly far so that when you put it in you have this big fucking chunky gap here all right and then you just grab this here and you just wind it in right there we go that way you just fucking wind him in till you see that gap close. And when it stops going in, and you know you've gone too far, and you can back it out until just when you see it start to come back open that that gap. And there you go. Solid as a fucking rock. So very, very simple. Um, magnets in the prongs, as I said, they line up with some gold posts, some gold plated um, screws that go all the way through the, um, the side of the mod and basically connect, you know, the top and the bottom. Because you've got an acrylic section here, you know, you need to transfer the voltage between the two um, metal bits and that's what those gold plated bolts do. We'll have a look at those in a fucking minute. Let's take the switch part a little bit further. So if we want to do that, well, we want to wind this out basically all the way. And then once you get to sort of the very end, you want to hold the uh, the button here and then you just keep spinning. And out comes the cap. So that's your, your contact. That's screwing into a nice copper bolt there. There's your acrylic section. And now we just pull this out. And inside of that, you've got an insulator basically covering the spring. So the spring doesn't carry any um, current. And you've got another insulator there for the spring. So those sit there like a little sandwich. And like what they've done here, they've used, uh, you know, I forget the, there is a name and I've been told the name before. Um, and I fucking forget it all the time. But this type of spring here where it's been sort of, uh, you know, designed to, to be flat top and bottom um, the way that it springs. So we've seen that before. Very nice. And then you've got your big chunky copper bit here. Mine is a little bit grubby, as you can see. I need to get in there and clean some of that. There we go, that's looking uh, nice and fucking clean. So yeah, big solid copper piece here, basically connecting everything up. And uh, you know, there is your housing, all really nicely CNC machined out of uh, aluminium or aluminium for the fucking Americans. But yeah, there's your switch taken apart. Um, shall we take the, uh, the body apart just to show you how you swap out that um, acrylic section in the middle. You take the Allen key that it comes with and uh, yeah, you just do your thing. And voila, there you go. So you take out that section, you take out your acrylic section, and you're left with your top aluminium piece. There you go. And then you just take your 18650 version, you'd slot him in there, um, and you take your bottom piece, slot him in there, and um, yeah, boom. Job's done. I'm not going to install the 18650 version because that's not what I use, so I'm going to go ahead and swap it back to what I had before.
there we fucking go. All back together. Now I'd screw your atomizer on first. Always do that one first. Drip tip on. Now venting, uh, as you probably noticed, there is no real vent holes. Uh, the great thing about this switch design is because of the magnets, if your battery ever got into trouble and uh, started to, to vent, you know, the pressure of the gases is easily going to push out these magnets. So I've been going positive end down. I've been using uh, Samsung 30T batteries. They're my always recommended choice for anything single battery mechanical. And uh, yeah, it just slots in. Oh man, we nailed that fucking battery adjustment first time, I think. <laughs> no rattle, no movement. Very, very nicely done. And that is about fucking it, dickheads, for the RKT, RKT or the rocket. Let's jump back up top. Let's talk some fucking pros, cons, prices, and everything bloody else. So there you go, dickheads, a bit of a squiz at the rocket, or the pocket rocket, you might fucking say. A uh, very fucking unique, different, interesting, refreshing shape, you know? Tube mods generally are cylindrical. <laughs> You know, there's only so many ways you can kind of do it. So it's uh, it's nice to see something different and unique um, and, and quite comfortable in the old fucking hand too with this different shape. But let's talk some fucking pros and cons. So uh, the shape, definitely something nice and refreshing, as I said, something different. So I really like the aesthetics on it, but it's also very comfortable. It's ergonomic in the hand. Uh, as I said, it kind of reminds me of those little pencil holders you had as a kid. Um, it fits in there nicely. It gives you something to hold on to. It doesn't slip out of your hand, all the rest of it. So uh, yeah, definitely props for the fucking design. Love the, uh, the use of acrylic, you know, the idea of uh, interchangeable sleeves and that sort of thing. Hopefully Half Moon will continue to sell just the acrylic bits. So, you know, that way if you want to get a few different fucking acrylic numbers and mix it up, change it up and that sort of thing. So beautiful, but also quite functional as well. That switch, now the switch is fucking a big pro for me. Um, it's clever, it's interesting to look at, it's very, very nice to fire. It's got a very, very short throw and that spring kind of gives it almost like a, a spongy kind of feel. It sort of just eases in um, really nicely. So it's comfortable and um, yeah, super quick and easy to change your batteries. I love that, just being able to pull off the bottom there, um, swap out your batteries super quickly um, and uh, you know, adjusting for battery rattle really, really easily as well. So uh, yeah, big, big props on, on that. Um, the fact that they went with some nice solid magnets, the fact that they used that little acrylic bit here, just, it's just a little touch. You don't really see that acrylic bit, you know, in, um, in use, but uh, you know, it's just nice when you take it off and you see that in there. Clever, you know, an insulator and it's quite uh, pretty as well. The machining and the quality is a big, big pro for me on this one. Once again, Half Moon with their, you know, their tolerances and their skills, you know, it's very, very nicely done. Um, you know, as I said, from the switch mechanism, you know, the way it just glides in there so nicely to um, to the way that the, the, you know, the contacts screw out, you know, the machining on the rest of the tube, it's all done to fucking perfection. And obviously in the United States of America, 100% US fucking made. quite clean looking overall you know they haven't put big logos along the side of it they've just you know done a subtle little R K um, T on the on the bottom there and on the top so I really like that I like that they put a copper you know threading hopefully increases the voltage transfer there so it's a, a nice little touch that they've uh, that they've done Big pro on the different batteries that it can take. Now, a lot of mods will do your 2700s, your 21s, and the 18650, but not a lot will also do the 20650 battery size. So this does all four, um, you know, from your 2700s, your 21s, down to your, uh, your shorter um, 18650s and, and uh, 2650. So really nice that they've uh, managed to, to accommodate all four of those battery sizes. Definitely a fucking hard hitter. Performance is definitely a pro for me. Really, really happy with this. I don't do the voltage drop tests, you know, and that sort of thing, because unless you have proper equipment like Mooch, it's gonna be pretty inaccurate. But just comparing it to my other mods, uh, you know, I'd put it up there with, with the harder hitting ones. Um, very, very fucking happy with the performance on this one. So cons, what do we not like about it? There's not really a fucking, you know, a lot to complain about here, dickheads. Um, you know, little nitpicky things. It's kind of big, it's a little bit more bulky. You know, it feels a little bit different in your pocket than a tube. Um, so, you know, if you like smaller, more, you know, 
compact devices. It's probably not one for you, but uh, you know it's not it's not ridiculous, but it is slightly larger. Uh, it doesn't really accept a huge you know array of atomizers. 25 millimeters is really going to be the biggest that you can put on here without any sort of overhang, without it looking ridiculous. You know, if you went a 28, even though it obviously is wider at the bottom, 28 is just going to look fucking stupid on here. So yeah, you're obviously limited by 25 and 24 millimeter addies. Um, apart from that, I don't really have, you know, a whole lot else to fucking whinge about here. It's, it's done really, really nicely. Um, it's performing fantastically. It's finished brilliantly. So yeah. Don't know what else I would fucking say is a bit shit. You know, some people maybe won't like the shape. It is kind of unique. It is sort of a bit different. I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of people saying it's fucking ugly as cunt. Um, but uh, whatever, you know, it's going to be very subjective. So apart from that, I don't really have any, any major fucking cons. It's performing fantastically. It looks nice. The quality and the craftsmanship and the finishing is all what I would expect from Half Moon. So, uh, so yeah, what's it going to fucking set you back, dickheads? Well, I can't really tell you. Um, it's not officially sort of out yet on the Half Moon site. They kind of launched it. Uh, a bit of a soft launch at NVE, um, you know, in Connecticut. Uh, and then they're also launching them at the um, Evolution booth at uh, Vapor Expo um, a couple of weeks back. But um, I can't find them on uh, any websites. I can't find a price for them anywhere. And um, I was talking to Pat, but he, uh, he went to bed. <laughs> Time zone differences in Australia and America. I forgot to ask him how much the retail price was before he uh, he nodded off. So um, I can't exactly tell you what it's going to cost. I would expect it to be you know around the two hundred dollars US kind of thing. I'd expect it to be you know maybe a, a, a two fifty, two hundred, something like that. I'm just speculating. I don't fucking know. Half Moon. They're never ridiculously priced. I think they're very um, fairly fucking uh, situated in the market for something that is made with real world quality and you know made in the US sometimes that is important to you but uh, apart from that dickheads I think it's uh, a bit of a fucking winner it's as I said nice and refreshing to get something shaped a little differently um, a switch done a little bit differently and uh, yeah I can't really uh, can't really say anything but good things about this one So that about does me, dickheads. I'll put my usual Instagram and Facebook links down in the description if you want to check out what I'm fucking doing outside of these YouTube videos. If you want to support my channel, please do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button, they're both free. But I do run an independent channel. And what that means is there's no payment here for doing these reviews. There's no jumping the queue fees, there's no sponsorships, there's no affiliate links. There's nothing coming to me from these companies for reviewing these products. I want to make sure you're getting an unbiased opinion on something. But to keep doing that, a bit of public support is always loved. So hit my Patreon page. I do prizes, giveaways, special content and uh, products that you want have access to anywhere else and all that keeps me doing my thing but if you can't that's all good sit back sub home your fucking dicks off or your bloody tits off i don't care what it is you're vaping on whether it's something shaped like a fucking rocket or something shaped like dad's dick as long as it's not <laughs> a fucking bloody cancer stick cheers for tuning in cheery fucking oh Got something new from Half Moon Mods.